Hello, this is Vampire here to talk about Eskrima. This is just kind of like an intro for people that are uh, interested in what it is. So Eskrima is a Filipino martial art and uh, it's the same thing as Kali and Arnis, which you may have heard before. And uh, so all three of those is the same thing, it's just a different name. And uh, Filipino martial arts is actually used quite a bit in Hollywood movies. Uh, for example, in the Born Identity, it was one of the martial arts used in in that in in those. Uh, is it a trilogy? Maybe there, I think there's more. There's like four, four or five movies. So it it was used in that uh, one of the martial arts. Um, the Hunted, starring Tommy Lee Jones and Benicio del Toro, is is a excellent uh, is is an excellent movie to watch if you want to know what uh, Iskrima Kali and Arnis is, is, is about. In fact, those guys, I, I believe, was uh, Sayaka Kali. And uh, yeah, that, that'll give you a, a really, really good understanding right there. Um, and then, of course, there's movies like Resident Evil, I, Frankenstein, and the list just goes on and on and on. Uh, a lot of times, you guys tell me. You guys, have you seen this? You know, they use Iskrima. You guys tell me about it, you know. so um, And so... You know, in, in the Philippines over there, it's taught to the military and the police to this day. And uh, over here, back in the 90s, when I learned it, early 90s, when, when I first encountered and learned it, uh, it was taught in North America as an add-on style. So in the Philippines over there, it's its, its own thing. You know, it's in fact, it's, it's, a, it's one of the national... Uh, sports it's part of that for for the Philippines Eskrima is you know their, their national martial art over there um, here in the United States like I said it, it was brought over here as an add-on style so it's like oh you, you're a Taekwondo guy hey man you, you should learn this stuff because from day one we will start you with single and double sticks um, a, a lot, so that was appealing to many martial arts practitioners and uh, it was taught to me, I feel like in very easy to learn, you know, like chunks rather than here's a super long form, learn that and that's just part one. And there's many other forms and until you, you learn those, you're no good. You know, it's, it's, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like the curriculum is massive. In fact, when I first learned it, I was more like, that's it. I want to learn more. You know, I, I really like this stuff. What else do I do? And I remember actually asking that to to my peers, and uh, I, I didn't say that to the to the teacher. That's kind of rude, you know. But I, I did tell the teacher. I was like, you know, I really like this stuff. If you want to do more of this, I'm cool with that. But to to my peers, I said, hey, dude, you guys have been here longer than me. Uh, what's next? And and they were like, well, you know, he really hasn't taught more than that. Um, if you want to know more, it, it's really you. You got to make. You got to go explore it and you got to make it yourself. Like you got to break it down and, and, and create more, you know, and, and that's part of the art. And I was like, really? Wow, that's that's crazy, you know. So uh, that's maybe what's missing in a lot of martial arts today, you know, like uh, same with like karate, you know, the the kata. What what is this? What, what does this mean? You know, it, it, of course, it's not a fireball, you know, but what the heck does that mean? You know, and instead of like demanding answers from your teacher and whatnot, you're supposed to do the puzzle solving yourself. You're supposed to become Sherlock Holmes and figure it out. And it, it, you're not going to get the answer right away. It can take years. And if you do get the answer in a year from now or several months from now, it may change. Your viewpoint may change. And that's the progression. You know, you build upon it. So that's very important. So that, that's the way it was introduced to me. So I, I guess I'm old school in a way. And I really enjoy that aspect that you learn a screamer. For me, it's been like a puzzle that I just keep solving and solving and solving and it's never ending and it's challenging and it's fun. That's the way that I view it. I feel like if I was sent to, you know, a, a laboratory in Antarctica, then man, I, I definitely want my, my double sticks. And if not, I'll find something and I'll just be working on it and I'll keep myself occupied, you know, or if I was, um, you know, on, on a deserted island, you know, like Tom Hanks in a castaway. Just, I'll find two sticks and I'll be fine. You know, I, I can definitely keep myself occupied that way. So 
uh, I feel that the art can be taught in chunks, small, like bite-sized pieces. And from there, you can reverse engineer the rest of the art. I, I really feel, believe in that. You know, it's, it's just very logical. And, and it's, it's a, I really enjoy the style. And, and another benefit is that you could be a couch potato. You could be super out of shape. And then, you know, just grab a stick and just start swinging it nice and easy, nice and slow, and work from there. So you could be out of shape and, and do this stuff. Um, the other thing is you could be old and do this stuff. You know, the only thing is uh, if you're young, like a kid, you got to be careful because we are swinging around weapons. So so that's the one thing, you know. But if you're an adult or older, then it's it's great. I, I feel that, that it's totally awesome. Um so it's known for single stick, double stick, and blade. You know, not just the knife, but also like a short sword. You know, because that's this this is a short sword's length. You know, so not to say that we don't have other weapons, but those are the main. And then of course, um, please don't forget we also have the empty hand portion. Yes. Iskrima Kaliarnis does have an empty hand aspect of the art. Um, that doesn't mean that, that we want to, to use that in a real life situation because in a real life situation is, I believe, always look for improvised weapons. And to me, that is the spirit of the style. So, you know, this, this is, in the Filipino culture, one of the most revered philosophies in, in the Filipino martial arts is something called flow flow is you know just it's like water you flow like water so in order to flow like water you have to adapt and that's what the Filipinos have done when the Spaniards came in the conquistadors and they were like you know some of the best fencers in Europe they had advanced technology and stuff and you know you bet the, the proud Filipino warriors fought against them because the Spanish were there to exploit you know, to conquer them. So they fought wars. The Filipinos saw, whoa, these guys have awesome weapons. They got armor. They got all this stuff. They got skills, whatever. I mean, this is your enemy that has killed your people. And they came into your land and stuff. And rather than going, I hate them. I hate everything about them. They saw, this is awesome about them. Let's, let's adopt it. Let's adapt to it. Let's learn their stuff. And that's what they did. Hence the name Eskrima, which comes from skirmish, you know. And, and so there is a lot of similarity in sword fighting that, that you're going to see from, from uh, the Eskrima uh, movements, footwork, you know, and, and whatnot. The, uh, the double sticks, the origin of that is espada y daga, which is sword and dagger, you know. And, and that was the way they fought over there in Europe. So, um, yeah, they adopted that. And when the Japanese came in for World War II, they adopted Japanese martial arts. A lot of Japanese, you know, so um, a, lot, a lot of the traditions, belts, you know, they were like, man, we need to get our stuff together. So, you know, let's, let's not just have, you know, yes, your family has done Eskrima for, you know, a long time, whatever you're proud, but now let's make it into a system, you know, so... Uh, look, look what they've done. So that you know, they they they've just constantly adopted, adapted, you know, and 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 that's the philosophy there. So I, it kind of makes sense that it was taught to the U.S. rather than this is the best style. It was like, hey, mix it with what you got, you know. And, and I really, really admire and like that philosophy. It's it's all about survival, guerrilla warfare, you know. Uh, being tenacious, you know, I, I admire that tremendously, you know, and uh, so that was the idea. And and uh, so same here with weapons. It's all about, to me, improvised weapons. So, yes, this is what we spend most of our time with, you know, single and double sticks. But this is where we develop our skill and then we transfer it to knife, empty hand, an improvised weapon. So it's not that in a self-defense situation, I expect to have these on me. No, I think people misunderstand that. That's that's not, I actually know a guy who was a really good Eskrima Kali guy. He was a military guy and, and I trained with him. 
And he always carried this in his in the trunk of his car, you know. So if something were to happen, you know, he, he would go to that. But um yeah, that's it's I don't expect to have this in a real life situation, you know. But my skills will be there. I've trained with this so much that even if I don't have the sticks, I can feel the sticks. I can feel I can feel the movements there. Boom, 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 bam, 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 boom. You know, the, the stick movements are there. So whatever I grab, you know, whether it be a comb, um, a cup, a plate, whatever, I can still wield it, you know, in a similar fashion, transferring my skill as much as possible. Of course, some things not going to transfer well. You know, some things are going to have limits. Some things are too long or too heavy or bulky or, or whatever, you know. But as much as possible, if I can't, at least the footwork, at least the evasive movements, you know, or the mentality, you know, those are the things that I'm going to pass. I'm going to try to transfer into the real-life self-defense situation, you know. And so to me, it's it's all about improvised weapons. And so, so that's what's important. And in order to do that, you know, instead of just training with the exact same size sticks, you know, but by the way, these uh, at Lowe's, I think I got them at Lowe's, they were like, you know, $2 each, $3 each, something like that, you know, so super affordable. And for home training, you know, you don't want your sticks super long and heavy because you could, you accidentally hit the wall, you're going to, you know, scrape it or even break it. Uh, your TV, you don't want to destroy it. You don't want to shatter the, the ceiling fan or the window. So you want it light, lighter, and, and you want it uh, shorter for in-home training. Now, you don't want it too short to where you're not going to feel the momentum and stuff. You know, you still want to feel the, the technique because the sticks are teaching you. That was kind of the mentality that, that I learned. To let the sticks teach you rather than I'm forcing the movement, you know. Um so, so anyway, the, because improvised weapons is important to me, I constantly switch sticks. I, you know, if I'm doing double sticks, then I'll, I actually try to use sticks that are not equal together. Not on the video, because I don't want it to confuse you guys, but, you know, when I'm training at home, you know, that's why I have multiple sticks, all different sizes, you know, um, and, and uh, whatnot, but... For combat, you want a heavier, longer, sturdier stick for sure, you know, because it does more damage and, and you're going to have more length. But for training indoors, lighter is going to be better, you know, and, and uh, developing skill and stuff. You're going to be spending more time at home probably, so you'll do a lot of that. When you go outside, you could switch to a heavier one and then you're going to feel the difference and it'll give you, you know, more of a workout. So... We go to the, some people don't understand. They're like, why? Why don't if I want to learn knife, why don't I just start with a knife? Why do I have to learn the sticks first? I always recommend the sticks first. This is our bread and butter. This is our bread and butter. We spend the most time with it, and you know, the reason why we do that is because it's easier to learn a lot of the movements with the stick. This is like a magnifying glass. It, it magnifies all the techniques, all the complex movements, it just makes it easier to do. With something this size or, or smaller, you know, it. the smaller it is, the more compact you have to be, the more efficient, the more, the more skilled you gotta be. So it's harder, you know, so you start with the sticks and then as you get better, you can start going smaller and smaller. And the same idea goes with like, a blade like you know a one inch blade or a two inch blade can you be effective and deadly with it yeah but it's gonna require more skill you know it's easier to be effective and deadly when your blades like this long you know you just have a swing a sword around you know that it's easier you, you know people will be afraid of you you know but with a smaller uh, blade you could totally do it. it just takes more skill so that's the idea right there to Smaller it gets, the more difficult, the more skill it's going to require. So definitely starting off, you know, the, the sticks are, are great and, and it really help you. I, I mean, not just starting off. I do it, I do it lifelong. So it's, it's a great thing, you know. So that's really, that's it. If you have any questions, you know, please feel free to ask. I make myself public, you know, to, to just help you guys. Um, you know, get started or, or, you know, if you're in between going from schools or you can't find one in your area or whatever, you know, that, that's why I do this because I was, I was in that uh, situation many times. 
And uh, I try to make videos that uh, back in the day when, when I was just learning this stuff that I would have I would have killed for some of this stuff. You know, those those are the try to video those are the kind of videos I try to make. You know, it's, what would I have wanted back then? You know. So anyway, thank you for listening and take care, folks.